Hey, this is Fling with the FS Army, and this is your week seven Millie Maker review. Let's do it. All right, so we're hopping over to Fantasy Labs. Uh, 18 lineups won it this week. This was the $10. They, they kind of switched it up, which, which I think is pretty cool. Um, added 100,000 more insurance, but changed the price to $10. So, you know, if you, as opposed to doing $200, if you put in 10 lineups, it's only $100. So it makes it a little more fun. You can play with, play with it a little bit more, get a little silly for the Millie for sure. But uh, the lineup that won it was Sam Darnold to Justin Jefferson. So it was Sam Darnold plus one. Now I had two bringbacks. I had a Jameer Gibbs and Amon Ross St. Brown bring back. It's funny because this was the game environment that we were really targeting all week. And it ended up being the one that you needed to, to target. Oftentimes the, the top game total fails, but it wasn't the case for this week. Um, Jameer Gibbs. He was, you know, really one of the top leverage plays. I think part of it was David Montgomery got hurt. He left the game and, uh, you know, and then he had a fumble and they just were riding Jameer Gibbs or riding the hot hand and he was really good. So 3% ownership in a high game total direct leverage off of the chalky pieces like Justin Jefferson. He absolutely smashed. Um, it was the, you know, two bring backs, but they weren't pass catcher so it wasn't weird i think this is a pretty normal build expect you know what we would expect to see in the millie maker darnold plus jefferson plus two bring backs um for that game that went over 60 points pretty solid stuff now kareem hunt i mean it doesn't matter how bad the chiefs are they just continue to plug in anyone at wide receiver at running back and they continue to produce uh kareem hunt was the guy 6k 22 points um you know a lot of the chalk running backs, they didn't really smash. So uh, that was a pretty good uh, play right there. Decent value. And then Elijah Moore and David Njoku. So this lineup had so much correlation. Basically, only one player wasn't stacked. And I guess you could say it was stacked. But you really wouldn't stack two you know, pass catchers with the opposing defense. You really wouldn't consider that a stack. But we had Elijah Moore and David Njoku stack here. And then uh, the Kareem Hunt and Miko Hardman. So, as I was saying, any wide receiver, any running back in the Chiefs offense definitely uh, was enough. And, uh, yeah, so two other stacks in addition to the primary pass catcher. Uh, Got to tell you, though, guys, just I don't know what's going on with the Millie Maker. Um, I don't just DFS in general. Like, scoring is so low right now. And, obviously, a lot of the chalk pieces failed on the slate. We had Juju get hurt, and that's how Miko Hardman, you know, probably gets in this winning lineup. We had uh, Whittington get a zero. We had uh, Tank Dell get a zero. Um, Jaden Daniels got hurt. So when whenever you have, like, a lot of chalk pieces that get hurt and put up zeros, like, I guess it's going to be a lower-scoring slate. 185 points since I've started doing Millie Maker reviews. That's the lowest I've seen. I went back to 20. I did... I looked at 2022, 2023, uh, even back to 2021, couldn't find a score lower than like 190, 195. So this is the lowest I've ever seen. And it was also contrarian. So 88%, the total lineup, quite low. Uh, this brings the, in fact, this is my article that I'm writing over at dfsarmy.com. You can check it out. But uh, this brings the the average to... 218 points so just kind of what i was talking about a minute ago the average in 2023 was 238 points this is the average to win the millimaker the average in 2022 was 240 points so we're really low right now the ceiling is really low i'm curious if we're doing some for some positive regression or is this the new norm um i guess we will keep watching it and see where it goes but so First place, put in 18 lineups, was able to, to bank it. Second place, um, let's go to Heaven ZG. Hopefully this won't crash out on us. And uh, second place was a Goff, Gibbs, Amon Ross stack. Two bringbacks, Aaron Jones and Justin Jefferson. So this lineup was a couple points behind. 
and um, and then had Elijah Moore and David and Joku. So that was the since he's are the Cleveland stack. Does that stack get there if Deshaun Watson doesn't get hurt? I don't know. It seems like it might have been for the best for the offense for him to uh, not finish that game. But yeah, he, the leaderboards were full of this game. As you can see, uh, this Detroit and Minnesota game, one, two, three, four, five pieces from it, and then a lot of Cleveland players. So uh, you had one, two, and three um, with Jonu as well. Let's see what third place did. And this guy, I, I'm guessing that's Notre Dame football. Um, he smashed. He was all over the leaderboards in a lot of different contests. And uh, Gino, this was a constant too. We're going to see. It was basically Gino or Donald were the the nuts uh, quarterbacks uh, or the top quarterbacks in pretty much all of the top five spots in like every contest. So this one had Gino to Gino unstacked here. That's crazy. So Gino with a uh, Brian Bijan Robinson bring back and it's like what I was talking about last week. This is just more and more what's happening. Um, but this one also had a Justin Jefferson and Amon Ra little ping pong stack. Elijah Moore. So Elijah Moore was kind of a constant, um, and Joku and that, and that's the thing. And I was all over it in Joku. I loved this play with Amari Cooper being out. He was kind of a staple of the tight end or the flex spot in a lot of winning lineups. Now this one had Tillman. So, Wow, less than 1% ownership with David Njoku just taking chances on all the Cincy or the Cleveland pass catchers with Amari Cooper being traded to Buffalo. This one had Goff in it, unstacked. So, you know, and I think I'm going to kind of finish it there with um, the the $10 Millie Maker. One thing I've noticed, and I want to go to the the hundred dollar Millie Maker because uh, this was put on my radar. Need lunch money, uh, ended up winning this contest, and you know he's a top DFS pro, and I actually have not seen him play in the twenty dollar Millie Maker um, that we see almost every week. I've seen him just kind of abandon this contest or the the ten dollar to twenty dollar and go to the higher stakes, the hundred dollar Millie Maker, and I think a lot of DFS pros are doing that. And, um, you know, I, what I like about this one is it's more winnable, obviously, because you're going against 27,000 entries as opposed to almost 300,000. So you see the score that won this was five points below that and need lunch money. He is one of the best DFS pros. Um, so we're going to look at his exposures real quick, but his top line was Geno Smith to DK Metcalf and Noah Fant with no bringbacks. Now, what is crazy about this lineup, I just talked about it earlier, Juju put up a zero. So when I say this contest is more winnable, it is because you can actually win with a zero in your lineup as opposed to really needing kind of the perfect lineup for this particular slate. Um, and secondly, look how crazy this slate was that you can win a million dollars and have a zero in your lineup because there was zeros, zeros everywhere. It was just carnage out there. So it was Gino, um, double stack, no bring back. And then we had Jameer Gibbs and Amon Ross St. Brown. So that's a, just a team stack, no game stack. Joe Mixon, low ownership again. Like when's the field going to learn? Play Joe Mixon. They're definitely going to continue to give him the ball and the touchdown equity is going to be great for him. And then, yeah, then I had the Juju Zero, the David and Joku. Uh, I love the Washington D going against Carolina. I thought that was smash spot. Obviously, not cheap, but smash spot. Um, so yeah, that was his top lineup, 180. And his second lineup, 20 something, 21 points behind it. So you didn't need to be perfect. Well, let's look at his exposures. And it's pretty funny because he kind of builds one thing I noticed. He, I play MME a lot of the same way he does, except 
I actually need lunch money, and he does not need lunch money because one of the best DFS pros in the world just won a Millie. He plays quarterback, nobody over like 20%. Um, kind of flat, played Hurts, played Purdy, played Geno. Nobody higher than 16% actually played Daniels, just even with the field almost on Daniels. Um, so yeah, there weren't like any big fades when your highest person is 16%. Uh, at running back, Kenneth Walker, highest exposure. He did great. So that is how you have a good day. Uh, but yet he had Pollard 50% and Pollard did not do well for not tournament winning well anyway. He got eight points. Um, and above the field on Mixon, so that certainly helped being almost triple the field on Mixon. Um, he was just over on Chuba. Chuba didn't do well either. Really, if you faded Pollard and Chuba, you probably were able to do pretty well in the day. If you, there was a lot, there was chalk running backs, right? There was, there was uh, Pollard, there was Chuba, Kyron was chalk. So you really wanted to eat that Kyron chalk, but you wanted to fade Chuba. You wanted to fade Pollard. Uh, Bijan was chalk. He wanted Bijan chalk. He was under on Bijan. So didn't have the perfect day. Clearly was faded Kyron, but was able to be on the right plays, at least in one lineup. And, you know, this Elijah Moore, that was a good play. I liked the 2-2 two -two out well. I think the process was right there. London was good. Um, Justin Jefferson, uh, Amon Ra, I loved those plays. Under on neighbors, so that was a good fade. You didn't want a lot of neighbors, that's for sure. And had 18% juju, so at least wasn't over the field, but he had the one lineup that won the Millie had juju in it. It's just crazy how that works sometimes. And not seeing any Whittington. Oh, yeah, yeah. Highest own. So this is nuts to me, too. The highest owned guy, Whittington. Pretty sure Whittington put up a zero too. So uh just freaking wild. Colby Parkinson. Yeah. Was high on the Rams. Had a lot of Kyron, had Whittington, had Atwell, had Parkinson. Um, I loved Bowers, I loved Njoku. Like the Fant play and the Schultz play as well. Let's see where he was. At defense, Cleveland, highest exposure at 20%. So Lee's got that right. Um, but kind of as I was, when I first started this breakdown, one thing I mentioned, I kind of play a lot this way for the most part, 40% max exposure on running backs and wide receivers. Maybe a, a guy that you really like, you go above that 50%. Um, but yeah, you're kind of seeing that um, 40s. That's kind of the max. And then a tight end loved Parkinson. Now more exposure in these spots that I would have that I like. You know, I that's a lot of exposure to Parkinson. Loved Njoku in that spot. Loved Bowers. But yeah, overall, not not nothing like too crazy with exposures at, at tight end. Like for the most part, keeping it kind of flat at tight end and defense. So um that's need lunch money. Now Want to look at Uticao. In fact, I want to go back to the $10 Millie to show you the contrast real quick here in um, selection, tournament selection. Now, Uticao is also a top DFS pro, and Uticao played the, the $10 Millie. Of course, this is going to crash on me. Well, UCAP played the $10 milli, lost money. And, you know, we're talking a milli with like almost 300,000 people in it, right? Uh, lost money. And a lot of it is just because of the payout structure. Now, lost $350. However, 
and the hundred dollar milli, we're gonna see one money playing pretty much the same lineup. Same exposures. So top lineup, Darnold, Jeff Addison. And that's that's wild, right? But only 154 points. Um, I don't know that I would have had any Darnold to just Addison lineups. I feel like if Darnold's in the nuts, then Jefferson's having a good game. But Kenneth Walker and Pollard. And then Higgins. I like the Higgins play. And then Elijah Moore and Njoku. So kind of a game sack between Higgins, Moore, and Njoku. Amon Ra. So Darnold to Addison with an Amon Ra bring back. Also had Kenneth Walker in Seattle D. So overall, you know, pretty solid lineup. Let's look at his exposures. Now, that's one thing about DFS pros. A lot of the top guys, they it's kind of like don't love anyone, don't hate anyone, hate anyone. You know, no one is really like unplayable. Chalk, maybe I hate someone because of chalk. Maybe fade that chalk, but everyone's in play. So play Darn or uh, Deshaun Watson here. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the guys that I like, that we like the DFS Army, Purdy, uh, Gino, you know, Darnold, under on Daniels. I, I like that in, in large field stuff. Just let's fade the expensive chalk quarterback. And it ended up working out, um, you know, not, not for the rest of the lineup, but like overall that strategy was right. Because, it, I mean, they smashed with Marcus Mariota. Like Jaden Daniels wouldn't have got there because he didn't need to get there. They probably would have benched him early. Um, and then at running back, a lot of Walker. So great process there. Uh, Aaron Jones at low ownership. I get that. Gibbs at low ownership, uh, almost quadruple the field there. So uh, I like that too. Not a ton of running backs. Oh, a little over on Kyron and Bijan. Faded Chuba. I like it. At some point, like his, he was running too hot. And it was, you can't keep playing a running back in negative game scripts and expecting them to smash. Like at some point, they're going to fail. And that's exactly what happened with Chuba. Wide receiver, Judy, Ayuk. Now, you play Watson, you're going to end up with Judy. You're going to end up with Elijah Moore. You're going to end up with Cedric. I mean, not really Cedric Tillman, but I'm guessing he had Njoku. Yeah, a lot of Njoku, 40% there. And, uh, you know, and this is kind of the thing where you just, some of this is just bad luck. Brandon Ayuk gets hurt, right? Um, you know, Tank Dell, he got targeted twice in the end zone and they just were terrible. And I wonder, I'm like, Stefan Diggs, can you just shut your mouth and not start a fight with the whole secondary before the game starts? Like you, you went and poked the bear that is the Packers entire secondary and the results kind of spoke for themselves. So, you know, Stefan Diggs is just shut up. That would, that certainly would have been probably a little bit better for these Dell shares and these Diggs shares, but specifically 25% tank Dell. And then, yeah, it just was heavy on that game. Cleveland and Cincy. Faded neighbors, faded London. So we're just fading chalk wide receivers, faded Juju. So, you know, made a lot of like good fades. But Ayuk, Whittington, you know, sometimes you, it's just bad luck. Great in Joku play. Pitts, Schultz. Um, you know, not really too far under on Bowers. Great on Washington D. Buffalo going against Will Levis, a.k.a. Mason Rudolph. But, uh, yeah, it's funny because, like we see here, top lineup was, what, 154? And, you know, we saw a, quite a bit of Deshaun Watson, so those aren't going to be anywhere near the top of the leaderboards. But when we go over to the $100 milli, obviously we saw need lunch money at the top spot, but let's take a look at Utica. 26 
50. It's really hard to hop around a ton on fantasy labs on a, a recording because it's just so buggy. But I want to make this point and just kind of show you why like contest contest selection matters and why the $10 milli, the $20 milli, whatever it's going to be next week, it's such a silly contest to try to win. Um, and you know, a lot of the things that we talk about on this review, as far as how to attack a slate, how do, how are the pros doing it? You know, what can we learn from it? They can be applied to these other contests because a contest with 27,000 entries is a large field GPP as well. In fact, it was only a five point difference between the Millie maker. That was the $10 with 290 something thousand entries versus uh, this millimaker where $100 entry fee, 27,000. So now Uticao, he placed 15th in this one, okay? Um, and, then, and that's just what I'm saying, like how much easier it is to be in the money because he only scored 161, which was, you know, 20 points away really from first place. And yet that he got 15th in this, which is crazy. And he won 5K there, and that's how he had a positive ROI. Whether and the other Millie, like you lost money, right? So these contests are much more winnable, you know. And obviously, $100 is a lot to play, but just keep that in mind. If you know, playing other contests or you know, $5, $10 entry fee, that type of thing, um, that are you know, 20,000 entries, much more winnable than the Millie Maker. But his lineup was Darnold, Jefferson, Addison, so he did have that. Donald plus two that you wanted to see as opposed to just the Addison one. Um, but was really, you know, kind of crushed by Trey Tucker here. And, uh, you know, and Addison didn't quite get there. We saw Jefferson in the winning Millie maker lineup, but the plus two wasn't there. The plus two was really Aaron Jones plus Justin Jefferson versus Addison. Um, and then you had that, had that Gibbs bring back. And Jatavian Sanders did good at, yeah, a double tight end. I love seeing that. Uh, I thought it was a, good, a double tight end slate. So uh, totally makes sense. And it did pretty well considering 2,900. Got the Flames. We got Brock Bowers. Would have needed a better day from him, but 19 isn't terrible. Seahawks D, 100%, 104% total ownership and 161 points, total points. So um, we you know, kind of take a look at his exposures and it's relatively the same lineup. Uh, Watson was a little different, a little less on Watson, but you can tell he didn't want the exact same 150, which I respect because that's either going to be the best day I feel like you've ever had, or, you know, it could be the worst day you've ever had. Um, I personally got smoked on the slate because I had a lot of juju. I had a good amount of Whittington. I had Dell. Uh, I had a lot of Daniels. So if you're playing the same 150 across a ton of contests, it can go very bad. So I like that he was very much on a lot of the same players, you know, Gino, Purdy, Darnold, Watson, but his exposures are different. In the $10 one, he had 20% exposure to Watson. He had um, Gino was the same. Purdy, he had 16% in that. Here he had 12 so Darnold, uh, he had here, he had 19%. So just by looking at quarterbacks, you can see, you know, how that kind of went better for him. Cause he had less Watson. He had more Darnold. Um, he had less Purdy. He had, uh, the same amount of Gino, but having less Watson and more Darnold was really, uh, what helped a lot with this build. Now he also had, yeah, the same amount of Pollard faded Chuba again. So, you know, running back was about the same, a little more Aaron Jones, a little more Kyron. That certainly helped. He had 26 versus 22. So, you know, the same type of player pool and he still had Jordan Whittington and God, if he had just maybe capped him at like 20%, might've won the whole thing. Um, but yeah, had a good amount of Elijah Moore. Um, but I think the idea that we get here is overall 
kind of the same um the same idea for the player pool but different exposures different 150 tweaked it a little bit more much more uh winnable contests much better payout structure so keep that in mind when we look at these milli makers we look at uh, you know a lot of these large field gpps but uh yeah that's gonna do it for this week if you like this kind of content please let us know hit that like button um comment let us know how the slate went for you hopefully you didn't have a bunch of zeros hopefully you know you kind of avoided the jujus and the, the whittingtons and whatnot but um Make sure you subscribe to the channel because we got a lot more content coming your way. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.